Good morning there. We're going to talk today about uh, mandolin fretboard radiuses. The radius on a mandolin, or a guitar too for that matter, uh, is the curve on the fingerboard. And some fingerboards, especially on mandolins, are flat like this. Some of them have a gentle curve and some of them have a very, very steep curve. Let me get these gauges right here and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, these are fingerboard radius gauges right here, and you can see there's a curve on each one of them. Um, these are Stumac radius gauges, and personally, you know, Stumac makes some metal ones too. I've got them up there on the shelf. Someone gave them to me. I prefer the plastic ones. <laughs> the reason is you've got a black side and a white side, and when you lay these on the fingerboard, when you, and you do this on Martin guitars too, especially, you lay them on here in the white, side uh, is easier to see against an ebony fingerboard. Um, I almost never use the black. In fact, what I like about the white side is when I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the white, what I like about the white side is you can't see a number on it. So when I'm checking the radius, I like to use the white side here so that I don't bias myself by saying, oh, this must be a 14 inch radius, you see. I lay that down there and I get the radius and then I flip it over and I look at it and see what it is. But that's what the radius is. Now, the other reason, the reason the radius is important is that when I'm refretting, I use, um, if I can, and I really like to do this, is I use a press to press the frets in. And that press has got calls, of the brass calls, and they're a certain radius too. So it's important to say you got a 16-inch radius, you use a 16-inch call, and you can just press those frets right in there. And... Once I started using a press, it's in one of my other videos too on the guitar video where I talk about refretting. Once I started using the press, my fretting um, results just went way up because you're just pressing down consistently. So if there's a little bit of a blip in the fingerboard somewhere, it doesn't matter because your fret will have a nice, gentle, and you'll have a very consistent radius as far as you can go. Now, when you get up to the heel, up in here, you can't press anymore, and you have to start, you know, tapping there. But you're, you're already up the neck right here, and the more important frets are right up in here. In other words, you know, you can't really, you can't really play up in here. So, anyway, that's why I like, that's why it's important to know the fretboard radius. So, so when you're fretting, you like to use a call to press if you can. That, that call needs to match the fretboard radius. But as far as mandolins specifically go, there's a couple of things about radius that maybe you haven't thought about or been aware of. Now, this is a Kentucky KM1000, and it's built very much on um, Lord Lore specs. You know, um, the tone bars are in a Lore location. You can take your little finger and stick it in there, and you can feel the tone bar. And the tone bar on this one is like right there. I mean, I can't even, it's right there. The other man lens I'm gonna point out here, the tone bar is over here, et cetera. And so that's different from a lore specification. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that the lures, um, the original Gibsons had a flat fingerboard. A lot of people like a flat fingerboard, a lot of people do not like a flat fingerboard. There's pros and cons to both of them, and that's what I'm going to go through in this video. So this Kentucky KM1000 has a flat fingerboard, and I know that because I refretted it one time. But what you find out, let me play it a little bit, okay? see the right hand motion going on here you can see the left hand what I find out about flat fingerboards uh, I personally prefer a flat fingerboards over a sharp radius fingerboard and I'll tell you why as we go along through this video when you first pick up a flat fingerboard when you're used to radius the middle of the strings these two middle strings feel almost concave you know it's like you're almost having to reach down for those because you're used to a radius where it feels like they're high but 
the edges feel like they're up there. So on a radius fingerboard, like this, I feel like I'm reaching down for the, for the for especially the high E string. I feel like I have to reach down to get that. And then the middle strings are up out here. So my hand feels like it's going like this, which it is. But it's a noticeable feel. And I found that when I went to a flat fingerboard and started playing this Kentucky a little bit, I found that the, the trebles were like right under my fingertips. And I, and I liked that a lot. I don't feel any difference whatsoever in my hand. So a lot of people went to a radius fingerboard because it helped their tendonitis. Personally, I think what's going on there is that you're just changing the fear that you're used to. So tendonitis is a result of an overuse. And your fingers are doing this all the time, this little micro motion. By going to a radius fingerboard, you're changing that and making different kind of motions. And that helps the tendonitis. So tendonitis is due to a repetitive motion. So I got tendonitis once really bad when I was doing a lot of keyboarding when I used to do computer tech support. And uh, I worked for a cheap company and they didn't have headsets. They had phones. So man, I'm on the phone like this all day long typing on the computer and we were all on desks too. We didn't have keyboard trays or anything like that. So I'm on a desk doing this all day long with my shoulder like that. And man, I got ferocious tendonitis in my in my elbow to where I couldn't even play guitar. So I got a headset, so I had to quit doing this. And I also got a keyboard tray where I could move my keyboard throughout the day. And I found out that, um, and this is going to have something to do with man in a minute. I found out that what was happening was my elbows were up so high it created this bend and I was doing this and so that's why I had the tendonitis. And I found that by dropping the keyboard way down here and angling it downwards that I was able to sit like this with my hands in a much more natural position. My shoulders were relaxed and I'm actually typing with the keyboard going down at an angle. So when you have those keyboards where they have the things on the back that flip up and you angle them like this, man, it's the worst thing that I could do. So the point of all this is I got rid of the tendonitis by changing the motion throughout the day. So sometimes I would have it up here a little bit, and then in an hour, I would adjust my tray and drop it, drop it down to here. That also lets the blood flow down your arms a little bit more. You don't have much blood flow in your hands, and when you're doing this all day long, no blood goes up there. And when I moved to the ranch, I started driving fence posts and, you know, doing stuff. And the first thing I thought was, man, it feels so good to do a big motion, you see, instead of that little tiny little micro motion all day long. So the point of that is, is if you get tendonitis with a flat fingerboard, yeah, sometimes going to a radius fingerboard can help you because you're using a different sort of motion than you used to. But if you just keep doing that, then you can get tendonitis from that too. So I don't think there's anything inherently natural about your fingers making the curve. And like I said, I feel like when I'm playing the radius fingerboard, I have to reach down farther for this, which gives a bigger finger motion, but it also, you have to get used to that because you'll miss notes. You're reaching farther than you have to. But that's one thing about a, a radius fingerboard is, is avoiding tendonitis. The reason I think it works is because you're using different motions. So you're having to reach down for the strings and you're not reaching quite as much for the middle and then you're having to reach clear over the top to get the bass strings. So there's some pros and cons, but I wouldn't think that having a certain fingerboard is the cure-all to preventing the tendonitis. It might help you get over the tendonitis. Just keep that in mind when you hear claims about you know radius fingerboards or whatnot. Okay, so this is a flat fingerboard. Now, the bridge needs to sort of match, sort of match the uh, the radius of the fingerboard. It won't match exactly because your bass string is higher than the treble string, so you will end up with a flatter radius on the bridge than you will the nut, for instance. And that's okay. 
the way to get that on a mandolin is you have to cut the individual grooves. So you got to get your file and you got to cut those individual grooves to set the action. You can't just throw a straight bridge on there. If you throw a straight saddle, this is actually a saddle. If you throw a straight saddle on there with the radius fingerboard, then your outer string is going to be higher off the fingerboard than the next string. And that's going to feel weird. So you can't set up a mandolin like that. You've got to cut those grooves and measure every single string to get the action you want. And in that way, the saddle will match the fingerboard radius, but it won't match. It'll be a flatter radius. But what that means is that over here on your right hand, you got to have a different feel. So with a flat fingerboard, you're going to have a flat tur radius here on this plane. What that means is that when you're doing a strum like this, you can get all your strings evenly, you see? So if you're going straight like this, your hand will go down like this and you can get all the strings on one strum. When you have a radius fingerboard and a radius saddle, you're gonna have to pull your hand down like this, you see? You're going to have to move in that kind of motion, in a circular motion, in order to get all the strings. This can work for and it can work against you. So this Kentucky. See, it's easy to hit all the strings. I can get them all. But it's harder to do double stops on it. To hit just these two strings... I've got to stop my pick now and pull it off and get it out of the way. Otherwise, I'm going to hit the next string. So, especially when you do double stops on the middle strings, you actually have to almost kind of, kind of go in there and get those strings and then get out of the way. Or you're going to hit the G string going in. So, if you have a radius like this, you hit the top strings like that. And you can go this way and hit these strings, and you can go this way and hit the bottom strings. So it's a little harder to do middle of the neck, or it's harder to double stops anywhere on this thing, because you've got to come in, get these strings, and get out of the way, and not hit the other strings. So, see, I'm hitting the G just a little bit. <laughs> trickier on the right hand. On the left hand I like it because I like having that treble right there on my fingers. But I guarantee you the middle strings feel like I'm having to reach in for them. They feel like the treble's out here and I'm all having to dig in to get the middle strings and then back out again for the uh, So, you can get used to it. It took me, oh, it takes me, you know, a couple of hours or an hour or so of playing a flat radius. Flat radius. That's a flat fingerboard. It takes you a minute to adjust to it. Once I do adjust to it, though, then I kind of like it for some things. I like it for, for broad strums, you know. <laughs> So that's one thing about a flat fingerboard. Don't just blow off a flat fingerboard. You can get used to it. They're pretty comfortable. Pretty comfortable. And let me get another mandolin. This one, by radical contrast, <laughs> is a Duff F5 mandolin. It's an Australian mandolin. I just refretted this one with Evo Fret Ride. And this one has got an incredible radius on it. The smallest radius gauge I have is six inches. And it didn't touch the side. So this is like a three or four inch radius. That's small, you know. That's the radius of this sucker as opposed to a 16 inch radius, which is out like this. This is a tiny little radius. I don't have a call. I had to hammer the frets in. Plus, it's hard to bend the frets because you can't bend Evo fret wire into that tight of a circle. It just it won't bend. I mean, you can do it with nickel silver, but you can't do it with stainless steel and you can't do it with Evo. So the way I have to do this, it's in another video of mine. Go find the one called Mandolin Setup 101, and I show 
how you use a Dremel tool to cut the tang to make it bend, to make that curve. So I had to do that to this one too. God, it takes forever, you know. You've got to radiate, you've got to hand bend, and you can't get a nice accurate three inch radius, you know. You've got to bend it with a pair of pliers and it ends up going like this. The little crooked jaggy things, and then you've got to tap it in there and make it match the fingerboard. So it picks up any imperfections in the, in the fingerboard. It takes for a long time, probably two to three times as long to do a radius fingerboard like this. Okay, so when you're playing the thing, I definitely feel like I'm having to reach down for that E. The G is not so bad, but it is. I have to. I feel like I'm reaching over the like this, you know, to get it. I'm exaggerating, but I feel like I'm having to reach for that G. When you're playing chords, it's nice. It fits your hand pretty good. But to get that E, I got to get used to this every bit as much as I have to get used to the flat fingerboard. Now, when you're doing double stops, because of the curve. In the thing, these strings are, you know, they're up, and these strings are here, so that when you're playing, you can go like this in a plane, you make your strum that way, and you can pick up these two strings easily, and then you're going to clear the rest of them, like this. Same thing with the middle, you're going straight across, you pick up the top, these middle two, and you can miss the G string. And when you go on the treble strings, you're going to go this way. So your hand's going this way, this way, and this way. Um, and you're going to have to adapt your right hand to do that. So you're going to have to go this way, and then you're going to go this way, and then you're going to go that way. You see? That's an exaggeration. But you can't get all, all the strings in one strum unless you curve your hand along that. You see, you've got to curve your hand like this. You got to do this kind of motion rather than just straight down. It's just a matter of adapting, but it is something that you've got to think about a little bit, maybe. So, anyway, here's like double stops on this one. See, I'll have no problem hitting the A now. problem hitting the G or the E, I clear them pretty easy. Pretty easy to do that, but you can't get them all. So when you're playing your chop, you've got to you got to move your hand in a little bit different motion, like this. A little bit of a, of a rocking motion rather than a straight down motion. Can't do that. You've got to rock your hand. Okay? So that's the feel over here. So obviously there's one in between these two. So like I said, this is like a three or four inch radius, which is a little too much for me. So you might think, well, okay, you just flatten the fingerboard, you know? But I have a Kershaw mandolin that came with a pretty sharp radius. I, I didn't measure it. It was six inches or so. Um, drove me crazy. Plus, it had big fat frets on it, which I didn't like. So when I refretted it, I took it down to about a 12-inch radius. So what I found out is that then the neck felt too skinny. It was already a thinner, you know, a little bit on the thin side. This is a pretty chunky neck here. There's a little bit on the thin side, and when I took the middle of the fingerboard down, all of a sudden the neck was too thin for my hand. I didn't like it. So I had to refret it again. And this time I used a bigger wire, a taller wire, and that made the fingerboard again feel fatter again. And I got by with it pretty good, and you know, I've left it since then. But it'd be better to start with a little bit of a flatter radius, a 12 inch, a 16 inch even. Something that's just this side of flat. And next mandolin is like that. But, so this is a DOF F5. It's a great sound of mandolin. It's not low at all. Watch my finger here. I'm going to look for the tone bar. And, <laughs> dude, I mean, it's, 
I'm clear in there. It's clear over here. Tone bar is clear over here as opposed to the Kentucky, which is like right here. So this is not a lore copy. It's a great sound of mandolin, you know, don't get me wrong, but certainly got um, got its sound. Not a lure copy though. So it's really easy to get the bass strings, and I can't get the treble strings on that. I've got a I gotta use a different different hand motion to get that. You just need to be aware of that. I'm not saying it's any better, it's any worse, it's a pro and a con at the same time. So a nice man Lynn. I'll play this again later at the end of the The third option is one that's in between, and this is an Elkhorn F5, and it has a flatter radius. I refretted this one too because it had big frets, and I just don't like wide frets because what I find is that what I find personally is I can't play clean on wide frets. I have fat fingers, short, stubby, fat fingers, and I can't get in between the frets quite as clean. And I just find that I personally play much better on a thin fret. And when you get an Evo or stainless steel, they're not going to wear out. That was the problem with thin frets in the past, is when they're nickel silver, you wore out the fret tops really, really quick. But with Evo or stainless steel, you don't have that problem. And I find that I know a lot cleaner with the thinner frets, which is why I refretted this mandolin almost immediately. This one's got like about a 16 inch radius fingerboard. When you first pick it up, it feels almost flat. It feels flatter. It feels more flat than it does radius. Okay? So it feels closer to the flat fingerboard than it does to the radius fingerboard. Part of that's because it's a 16 inch radius, which is, you know, 16 inch circle. So it is almost flat, but not quite. Not quite. To me, 1612 is the sweet spot on a mandolin. You still got a little bit of curve going on over here on the bridge. You still got a little bit of that curve right here. The middle strings don't feel like they're down. They feel like they're right there. To my hands, it feels like, sure, it feels like it's on a plane, but I know it's not because I, I've, re you know, I've refretted it. So I know this is a 16 inch radius. So, but when I pick it up, it feels even. Everybody's right where I want them to be. So that's something to think about. And over here, there's enough of a curve. That I can get the double shots without quite hitting the other strings. But if I want to get them all, really is almost a straight down motion now. There's not that sewing motion that I have on the um, on the duff. And you can hear the treble coming out of that. I can get them all if I want to. So to me, a 16 or 12 inch radius is, to, is about the sweet spot. And you know, I'd be fine with 12 too. It's, I, I don't know that I could even tell the difference between a 16 and a 12 if I hadn't already measured it. But those are just some things to think about um, if you're looking at a mandolin and you're having trouble with it for some reason or another. You know, you just can't quite make you know make your notes clean. Take a look at the frets. If they're wide frets and you've got fat fingers like me, that might be part of the problem. The other thing might be it might have too much radius and you're having to reach down for that. And it, it, it's, a, it's a lot about reactions. You know, how do you react to it, especially when you're going fast. You've got to get on there and get off and like that, you know. And if it's not set up really, just right for you, you, you may have trouble with it. Your notes might not come out as clear. So it might not be you. It might be the instrument. I've been there before. So... Okay, that, that's some things to think about on mandolin radius. I personally prefer a 16, 12 inch radius. Both of my personal mandolins are there. If I had to go the one way or the other, I would go flat rather than sharp, sharp, small radius. I could probably be fine with like a seven or nine inch radius too. I could probably get used to that. 
more so than I can a really super sharp radius. I don't see the real need to go to a, a radius as small as three or four inches. And again, that's your, you know, you might be different. You might like that better. But again, I'm just trying to tell you that if for some reason your mandolin is not as instinctive as you would like it to be, take a look at the radius of the fingerboard. Your options are, <laughs> you know, there's pros and cons on that. Like I said, if you had a really sharp radius, I can flatten it, but it will change the feel of the neck a little bit. If you have a big chunky neck, eh, it might be okay, you know. But if you start with a thinner neck, like on my kiss shot, which is thinner than this one, man, I lost just a little bit of feel to it, and it felt too skinny, you know. Mm. So... This one, this one plays really super easy for me.